Thank you, Vera. Um, I just like, yeah, I'm at the work at uh, the Chelsea Westminster Hospital in London, which is which is actually probably an art gallery, cunningly disguised as a hospital in some respects, and there's actually an active art gallery as well, and the Fortis Clinic. Um, when I'm talking about the surgical strategies for ankle fractures um, in football, I'm not going to go through the, the, the basic AO principles and things. It'll be taken for granted that you're going to have a good, uh, accurate reduction of things. What I'm just talking about is where I come in and I'll approach it, certain aspects to footballers' injuries as opposed to the general population having an ankle fracture. I've also get, like to get something else out of the way right, right here and now since Jan Carlson is there. Um, yes, it was a fantastic goal. Yes, we were thoroughly beaten and thoroughly <laughs> deserved to be beaten. It's a good thing that actually the, there were a whole lot of English supporters who were there who actually stood up and applauded it. So it's it finally, it was, a, it, was a, it was a fantastic goal. So from the principles of things, what we're talking about is um, the Weber the Weber A fractures, certainly they, they can be treated conservatively. The Weber C, they obviously need operative management because of the underlying uh, problems that are going on with it. And the Weber B, by and large, uh, we suggest they're operative. Well, why? Well, when we know we ensure an accurate reduction, is there any rotational deformity or anything like this at all? No, once you've accurately reduced it, you've, you've got it there. The other thing is it allows for early rehabilitation. Certainly, what we want, we get them in the pool at uh, either Arsenal or everywhere else, and. Uh, they go in the pool from about a week post-operatively, and they get going from range of motion from two weeks. It also reduces the parent, any perineal tethering and improves the strength uh, and uh, uh, early strength and proprioception in that. Um, certainly the other thing is that's become key in, okay, key in uh, things is actually having the video surveillance, which didn't work there, but actually telling you the mechanism of the injury so you can actually see what's exactly what's going on. There's always a thing, that delay for surgery. Um, if Mr. Mancini wants his operation done tomorrow, he, get, he wants to get it done tomorrow. He doesn't want me to tell him that actually I'm going to delay the surgery because there's a bit of swelling. He wants it done, and he, he partly doesn't really understand perhaps why we want to delay it. Do we need to d delay for gross swelling? Well, by and large, Probably not. If the blister's present, yes, we do. But the, we've got to take into account the effects of the delay, the player psychology, the pressure certainly from the coach and the manager, which then relays straight down onto the coach, onto the, uh, the physiotherapy staff to get them back. And if you can save a week now, it could be a Champions League match in, in 10 weeks' time. Also, the other things we've been using are the, uh, the, obviously the game ready. Uh, and uh, the hylotherm, which has uh, been used, not many jaw injuries when, I, when I, I'm a foot and ankle surgeon, but certainly for some of the more f the foot injuries, that's been uh, quite useful. I'd be interested to see whether you're using that, using that here. Treatment of deltoid injuries is a consideration which has been uh, ignored to a certain extent in many of the soccer injuries. There is actually little evidence uh, where, of whether it should be uh, repaired at the same time or interfered with at the same time as a lateral uh, a fibular fracture. According to an RCT back in 1995, there's no difference. We know, however, that malreduction is, causes secondary pain, and I certainly see deltoid injuries that have been treated conservatively uh, come back, even in the general population, with medial impingement later. And there's good evidence to support this. And although this paper says there's no difference, in my general practice, in general orthopedics, for, in general foot and ankle orthopedics, for the general population, I still repair the, the, the medial deltoid because I think it does lead to problems later on, uh, such as in our sort of our GB cop, hockey captain. There is an association with unstable syndesmosis in elite athlete, and certainly if you've got an, if you've got an a syndesmotic injury, I think it should, it should be repaired. Um, Late deltoid instability is certainly a real problem. So is my video footage. <laughs> Sorry, chaps. Um, and the, as far as late, as, as far as deltoid ligament injuries are concerned, I don't think this sign's been described anywhere. Jan is, it would probably know as well. But certainly if you get a, a, a bruising coming up the leg a little bit further up here, that denotes there has been there's some tracking of blood going up the tibialis posterior tendon. There's a big hemarthrosis, and we see, seem to see that a lot when he's got a deltoid ligament injury. And if you get it, if you get in there, they should. I think they should be repaired. They're easy to repair. You can get the the ligament out. Certainly, the deep ligament uh, gets enfolded between the medial malleolus and the talus, 
and it should be repaired back onto the, uh, onto the, onto the tibia, either with sutures, uh, as I did beforehand, and I tend to prefer sutures because uh, these can interfere with future MRI scans, and certainly the, these guys are going to injure their ankle again, and if it's going to interfere with an MRI scan in the future, I prefer to just use an interosseous suture rather than the suture anchors. There's debate as to whether or not we should use uh, ankle arthroscopy for footballers. We need to uh, define the need for that arthroscopy, and certainly uh, people in, uh, in the UK have been saying, no, there's no need to do this. I think that, change, that is changing. So we'll review the literature, identify when arthroscopy may be useful, and define its uh, specific uses. There are patient-specific factors. Elite athletes, such as what used to be our uh, uh, fly half for, uh, for, uh, for rugby, when he just dislocated his ankle. Certainly, I think there are specific features. So you've got your elite athlete, your Qatar footballer, he should have an ankle arthroscopy if he's got an ankle fracture. There are fracture factors, such as can we assess the reduction um, uh, uh, with a percutaneous uh, platform fixation, which I'll come on to in a minute. And should we uh, be assessing the articular surface as a predictive outcome and also for the treatment of any lesions? We know that 63% of uh, 48 fractures in 2002 and 79% by Beat Hinterman in 2000 uh, had uh, uh, cartilage lesions. 69% of these ones were Taylor, and they were worse in the Weber C and, the, and anyone under 30. So that's just the sort of the group that we're seeing in, in, in football. And by and large, we see an awful lot of the Weber C fractures are the more common ones that I see, and certainly in the, in, in, in the studies that have been done in, in the UK, which it's not as easy to do. I was really impressed with that, Philip. You know, the, um, uh, Cristiano, when you were talking about the, uh, the study done over here, it's so difficult to do that in the UK because the clubs will not share information. For rugby, we got all the clubs together, but it's a real problem. If you can speak to uh, our clubs, it'd be great if you can get that going. 73% um, of 84 patients in uh, 2009, and certainly it was the uh, PER and the SER4 are more likely to have more than two lesions uh, in, in the ankle. So what happens? OK, you've got those cartilage lesions. Does it actually matter? Well. Of the 109 patients arthroscopy with ankle fixation, 13 years follow-up, this study, the OCLs were, had, a f uh, had five times worse uh, clinical situation uh, at 13 years follow-up. And uh, they also had radiographic findings that were worse in three, in three and a half of them. So is an ankle arthroscopy perative? Well, yeah, I think if you've got a loose fragment of bone uh, or an osteochondral lesion there, yeah, that needs to come out. It also brings on to this, the question of when you should do an MRI scan. I was at a match on Sunday, and a player had an injury, and we had a heck of a job trying to persuade the manager not to get the MRI scan done within two hours of the injury. We said, no, can we just leave it till tomorrow when the lesion will have evolved a little bit on the MRI scan? And eventually, we managed to persuade him that it be, could be done the following day. But what's the timing? There isn't actually a lot of, a lot of evidence to suggest when, when this should be timed. Um, whether or not, uh, ideally, it's actually probably better to leave it for about 72 hours when an osteochondral lesion and a bone bruising can come out a little bit more. But realistically, the, the manager and the player wants to know exactly what's going on. So when you go in there, this player here, he had a few fragments of bone here with this, obviously, with he had a Weber C fracture here. And he had a few fragments of bone around the front there that looked old. Interestingly, on this MRI scan, which was done at 24 hours after the injury, he had his injury down in, uh, down in uh, Australia, he's a rugby player, he uh, had no bone bruising or anything on there, but he had significant cartilaginous defects on here, which is shown in white, unfortunately. <coughs> the next thing is the stability of the syndesmosis, which is particularly stable in this video as well. Um, you know, we, we don't know how to assess the syndesmosis. Clinically, it's very difficult. Imaging, is imaging helpful? Well, yeah, you can have plain radiographs. Certainly, it excludes a fracture. All the, the medial clear space, all the different lines that have been drawn and looked at very carefully. In fact, there's poor sensitivity, uh, uh, but good specificity. But there's no association between X-ray and MRI scan, so it's actually very difficult. And what we're dealing with half the time in the, in the, in the, in the sportsman is not a frank diastasis of the syndesmosis, but one of these subtle diastases. I'd be delighted to talk about syndesmosis later on if you want me to. There's not a lot of evidence for it, but it's the subtle ones that are, that are the real problems for the soccer players and the high-level athletes. It's not the frank diastasis. 
We can do a stress test, yes, external rotation, but there's certainly poor association of radiographs, uh, whether stress or otherwise, when you're doing this. So maybe, uh, for we were talking about the, uh, the arthroscopy, maybe an arthroscopy has a role in assessing the syndesmosis st stability. You can actually look straight into the syndesmosis. You could drive a, a, a cattle truck through this syndesmosis here, and it's, uh, when you stress it, it actually physically opens up, so you can see that it is unstable and demonstrate that. Next, the percutaneous pylons. This is a, a disastrous fracture for a, uh, for a professional soccer player, or potentially disastrous fracture. And certainly, you want to use a minimally invasive technique if you possibly can, because you can get an accurate reduction. If you can get an accurate reduction, but minimally invasive, then you should be able to uh, get the patient um, mobilized earlier with less wound complications and less uh, soft tissue trauma, which can obviously lead to st uh, st uh, uh, stiffness later on. So. In conclusion, I think ankle arthroscopies are useful, certainly in the, uh, uh, the pronation external rotation and the supination external rotation type 4 injuries, and I think in selected cases, and in this case, elite athletes. I think in ankle fracture management, I think all soccer players should have a, an, a, an ankle arthroscopy, because although an MRI scan may be uh, 95, maybe 96% sensitive, if you've got 4% of a 200,000 pounder a weak player, Mr. Mancini's not going to forgive me if I leave him with a piece of bone stuck in his ankle. So in summary, the pressure is always on for early ORIF. I don't know whether that's absolutely necessary. It is for the club, probably isn't necessary for me, and I would prefer to wait personally 72 hours, get an MRI scan so we can see everything, get the swelling down at maybe five to seven days. Otherwise, we do it straight on the scene. We don't know whether an MRI scan can, be, uh, can, can miss these lesions. I think it probably can. But I do think we should consider an arthroscopy to make sure we get the full diagnosis, treatment of any OCLs, and also decide whether there's any um, uh, syndesmotic instability. The aim of the uh, open reduction to internal fixation is to allow early rehabilitation. So we can get them in the pool, uh, like here down at Chelsea, for, we can get them in the pool. Brian used to, when he was working for Chelsea, liked to get them in the pool on day two. He used to drive Andy Williams and me a bit mad. But I think certainly at a week down the line, and in fact, if you look at the evidence for it, there's no evidence to, to increase infection from, uh, from pool work at all. Just in the, in the ankle, I just am worried about the wound management and the, 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 the wound inflammation. Perhaps it's not such a big problem in the ankle. And, uh, well, yeah. He had a bit of a whiteout as well. I'm sorry about my videos. I'll get it running for the next, for the next talk. But the idea is to get them back. So he's a guy, an, an England footballer, who uh, came back. He was, he was doing sand work in, in, and out of, in and out of holes, doing multi-directional work at three months post-injury. That's what we need to do so we can get them back match fit at 12 to 14 weeks if possible. And if they were earning 200,000 pounds a, year, uh, a, a week or whatever, that's going to save Mr. Mancini a fair bit of money if we can get them back just two weeks early. But I'll be happy to take any questions later on. Thank you.